And so it's extremely important to make sure that no matter what it is that you do, you actually vet and see, does this person have experience in the area that I'm about to ask them? Welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello, and in this episode, I just want to give you a friendly reminder to stop taking advice from people who have not achieved the things that it is that you want to do. So many times I see a lot of beginner entrepreneurs make this mistake. They ask people for advice that are not qualified to give advice on that topic. Like maybe they're asking about real estate investing advice to someone who's never bought a house or they've only bought one house that they live in, or they're asking about stock trading or crypto advice from someone who doesn't even own any of those assets. And so what you want to make sure to avoid is to be asking people for advice or opinions when they have absolutely no idea. It's the blind leading the blind. They are equally as clueless as you are in many cases. And so their advice does not really carry much weight. And so it's extremely important to make sure that no matter what it is that you do, you actually vet and see, does this person have experience in the area that I'm about to ask them, right? Whether you invest in a course or mentorship, or even if you're going to an event and you're seeing a speaker speaking, I always snoop around a little bit. I do my due diligence. I want to make sure when I'm looking, what's their background? What's their criteria? Do they have any experience in this? Are they an expert in this topic? Or are they a self-proclaimed expert? Are they giving advice and maybe teaching on a course that they have no reason to teach on? And they maybe have no experience whatsoever. And again, it's just a warning because I I'm very self-aware, I feel. And sometimes maybe I sell myself short. People are asking me for advice or my feedback on a certain thing. And oftentimes I'm like, look, I don't think I'm qualified to really tell you what I think about this because I'm not sure. I don't have experience in it or someone else would be better suited to give you the answer that you're looking for. I am very self-aware. At times I wonder if maybe I sell myself short where I do know what I'm talking about. I do have experience, but I just don't feel comfortable. Maybe I just don't have enough experience or I've only done that thing once or twice. This is something you're going to experience when you're new in business or you're new in sales. I remember, you know, at one point you have no clients, right? How do you land your first client and have confidence when you've never done it before? You're going to be nervous. You're going to be unsure. But as you start to take action and do those things over and over again, there's some point in time where you go from being a total noob where you have no clients, you haven't done any deals, you haven't had any clients um, closed or any work done to having 20 clients, 30 clients, 40 clients plus under your belt. And somewhere in there is where you become an expert. You become very competent in your craft. You go to all the conferences, you read the books, you listen to the podcasts. Maybe you have the podcast on that topic and you therefore become the expert. So whatever it is that you're looking to learn before you ask somebody, put your hat, your little hat on, your little inspector hat and go see how they done this for a long time? Do they have a lot of content around this? What products do they offer around this? Are there reviews that I can check and make sure that people had a good experience and that they actually got a return on their investment, right? Whether it's an investment opportunity, a business franchise, anything at all that you're looking to get into, because while there is a degree of success that kind of rests upon your shoulders, yes, you do have to do the work. You have to take consistent action. A lot of the success is based on you and your performance. However, you're setting yourself up for failure if you don't have a proper mentor or coach or you don't have a proper framework with which to hold yourself accountable to a set of tasks or steps. Um, For example, like let's say you're buying a subway, like a franchise, you can't just buy that thing and start running it tomorrow. As simple and straightforward as it is, there's processes, there's systems, hiring process, right? Like what, where is all, all the documentation? How do you actually set things up? You probably have to go through some sort of training, I would imagine, in order to hold the standard that all these subways, you go to subways across the nation, more or less, they're all pretty much the same. You've got the type of bread, do you want tomatoes and lettuce? Do you want it toasted or not toasted, right? It's very uniform. And I've been there enough times back in the day, I don't really go anymore. I've been there enough times where I know the process, but still I would need some sort of playbook or guidance or mentor whenever I'm moving into that space for the first time as an owner. So key takeaway for this episode, short and sweet, before you get advice from someone, make sure to actually verify that they know what it is that they're talking about and that they are actually an expert in that field. If you got something from this message, please feel free to share it with a friend. If you're not subscribed, make sure to like, subscribe, comment on YouTube if you have any questions. And I look forward to catching you on the next episode of the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. 
Thanks so much and catch you on the next video.